reducing stress can help to prevent shingles. Psychological stress has been linked to shingles outbreaks and major depression was shown to decrease cellular immunity to the varicella zoster virus and to increase the risk of shingles. In addition, a study reported that people who developed shingles experienced in the six months preceding the outbreak more frequent events that they perceived as stressful. In addition to relieving stress, other techniques can help to relieve the symptoms associated with the shingles. Cool baths and applications of cool, wet compresses on the blisters can relieve the itching and the pain. Good hygiene and daily washing is another important consideration. Maintaining trimmed fingernails can help to reduce the damage caused by scratching and also prevent secondary bacterial infections. Moreover, eating a healthy, well-balanced diet and getting plenty of rest can strengthen the immune system. One study showed that individuals who ate less than one serving of fruit per week had a more than threefold higher risk of developing shingles when compared with those who ate more than three servings per day. As with shingles, stress is also implicated in the occurrence of herpes outbreaks. A higher level of perceived stress was identified as a risk factor for the occurrence of oral lesions called by the herpes simplex virus 1. Several studies have found a link between emotional distress and herpes outbreaks. Therefore, reducing emotional stress can help to prevent flares. Getting enough sleep, eating a balanced diet and exercising regularly can help to reduce the stress while simultaneously strengthening the immune system. There's some evidence that oral herpes outbreaks can be triggered by exposure to sunlight and ultraviolet radiation. This may be due to the UV-induced suppression of the immune system or the direct reactivation of the virus. Although it can be difficult to avoid sunlight entirely, minimising exposure and using an SPF 30 sunblock, particularly on the lips and surrounding skin, might help to reduce the outbreaks. Using a condom correctly during sex and avoiding intercourse during an outbreak can help to prevent the spread of genital herpes. A number of studies have shown that multiple aspects of immunity in the female genital tract are controlled by sex hormones and the hormones influence the susceptibility to several sexually transmitted diseases, including the herpes simplex virus. Evidence from animal studies has shown that treatment with female sex hormones had a significant impact on the rate of the herpes simplex virus 2 transmission. Treatment with estradiol was found to confer some protection against vaginal herpes simplex virus 2 in a mouse model, whereas progesterone was found to exacerbate the viral infection and it contributed to extensive inflammation. This might be because the progesterone induced diestrus-like state during which the mice are the most susceptible to the herpes virus infection. Studies on the effects of hormonal contraception in women have yielded mixed results. Use of the injectable Depo-Provera contraceptive has been linked to up to a fourfold high risk of acquiring a herpes infection and increased the risk of cervical shedding of the virus. The relationship between oral hormonal contraceptives and herpes shedding is less clear as some studies have found increased rates of occurrence, while others have seen no difference compared to the non-users. More human studies are needed to determine the effects of hormonal contraception on the spread of herpes in different populations and with different types of contraceptives. Potential differences associated with the use of synthetic and natural hormones such as progestins and progesterone should also be explored as this can help to explain some of the differences seen in the herpes simplex virus 2 acquisition and the shedding. Although there's no effective cure for the herpes infections, several natural interventions can help to reduce the frequency and the severity of the outbreaks. Both shingles and herpes can manifest when the immune system is unable to prevent the latent viral infection from reactivating. Therefore, natural interventions that maintain the health of the immune system can help to prevent outbreaks. Vitamin C is also called ascorbic acid and it's a potent antioxidant with natural antiviral properties. Lab studies in vitro have found that vitamin C and some of its metabolites 
can, to some degree, inhibit the herpes viral replication. However, studies exploring the use of vitamin C in the treatment of herpes infections in humans have been limited and have largely relied on self-reported results. A recent retrospective study of patients with herpes simplex keratitis found ascorbic acid at 2 grams per day reduced the risk of recurrence by almost 50% compared with no treatment. However, the use of aclavir at 800 mg per day was still superior. While early results from studies exploring the use of vitamin C in reducing the symptoms of the herpes viral infection is promising, further testing is still needed. Vitamin C may also provide relief from the nerve pain that often accompanies shingles. Vitamin C has been found to exhibit analgesic or pain relieving properties and researchers have found that vitamin C supplementation at a dose of 200 milligrams to 1.5 grams per day can help to reduce the pain and the skin manifestations of shingles and it prevents the development of post herpatic neuralgia. Vitamin C can also be particularly useful in individuals who are allergic or resistant to standard pain medications. Placebo controlled trials in patients with shingles have found conflicting results on whether vitamin C reduces the frequency or the severity of spontaneous pain. However, post herpatic neuralgia may be prevented with intravenous vitamin C. Consistent with this, vitamin C intake has been linked to a decreased risk for post herpatic neuralgia. And these results suggest the vitamin C can help to reduce the risk of prolonged pain that's associated with shingles outbreaks, but further studies in humans are warranted. Rishi mushroom is a fungus and it's been used medicinally for centuries in China, Japan and Korea. Some components of the Rishi appear to have antiviral properties. Researchers have identified several compounds in the Rishi that exhibit strong antiviral activity against both the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 in vitro. Preparations of reishi mushroom have also shown promising results in early clinical studies. In a trial of five Japanese patients with shingles, a formula containing reishi and other botanicals resulted in prompt pain relief and resolution of the symptoms. Another study involving patients with herpes infections found that application of a herbal mixture also resulted in a shorter duration to the symptom clearance in both oral and genital herpes compared with untreated control patients. Much of the benefit of reishi mushroom may be due to its ability to combat immune senescence and promote a healthy immune system. A number of studies have found that compounds in the reishi have immunomodulatory activities and they promote the activation of immune cells such as macrophages and T cells and the secretion of antibodies. Together these activities help to achieve the dual goal of promoting a healthy immune response against viral, bacterial or fungal infection while also suppressing excessive or chronic inflammation that threatens long-term health. Vitamin A and its precursor beta carotene can help to modulate immune function. Serum vitamin A levels can play a role in the shedding of the herpes simplex virus, as it was reported that cervical viral shedding in women who were not pregnant or taking hormonal contraceptives was associated with low or deficient levels of vitamin A. This suggests that maintaining sufficient vitamin A intake can help to prevent the transmission of herpes to others but studies are needed to explore the specific relationship. Additionally, beta carotene can provide low level protection against UV radiation from the sun. And given that minimizing sun exposure can help to prevent herpes outbreaks, sufficient beta carotene and vitamin A intake might play a protective role against flares. Importantly, excessive intake of preformed vitamin A can be toxic though. While in the past vitamin D was appreciated for its role in maintaining bone health, more recent evidence suggests it might be a potent immunomodulator. Vitamin D deficiency is associated with impaired immune function and increased susceptibility to infection. Several lines of evidence suggest that vitamin D can help to combat herpes and shingle outbreaks. In a cell culture model, vitamin D supplementation significantly reduced the viral load of the herpes simplex virus 1.
studies in patients who were undergoing dialysis found that serum vitamin D levels were associated with immunity to varicella zoster virus, and vitamin D supplementation was associated with significantly lower odds of developing shingles. Similarly, patients with recurring oral herpes outbreaks were found to have lower serum vitamin D levels than the control. A study of paediatric patients with multiple sclerosis also found that higher vitamin D levels were associated with higher levels of anti-herpes simplex viral 2 antibodies in the blood, suggesting increased vitamin D levels can allow the immune system to better respond to the infection. The anti-herpes simplex viral activity of vitamin D might be the result of its ability to increase the levels of an immunologic antimicrobial peptide called catalysidin, and this has antiviral properties against herpes simplex virus 1 and other viruses. In cell culture models, the catalysidin induced the expression of antiviral interferon response, and it significantly inhibited the production of the herpes simplex virus 1. The catalysidin peptide LL37 also inhibited the herpes simplex virus 2 replication in a mouse model, and lower levels of the catalysidin protein expression were observed in patients with disseminated herpes simplex viral infections. An open-labeled controlled clinical trial in 89 subjects with herpes simplex genitalis or herpes zoster studied the effects of either aclavir alone or aclavir in combination with a 90-day course of nutraceutical formulation consisting of vitamin E, coenzyme Q10, selenium and L-methionine on the viral related biomarkers and the lesion healing rates. The nutraceutical formulation plus the aclavir produced faster healing rates and fewer relapses when compared with the aclavir alone. Moreover, these outcomes aligned with lab findings of decreased viral load and increased antiviral cytokine levels. Plasma antioxidant activity was higher in the nutraceutical formulation group also. In uncontrolled trials, topical application of vitamin E oil helped to relieve pain associated with oral hepatic lesions and expedite the lesion healing. Some studies of topical vitamin E have used once daily applications, whereas others have used multiple daily applications. A mouse model showed that vitamin E deficiency impaired the immune response to central nervous system herpes simplex viral 1 infection. Another mouse study provided additional evidence that vitamin E deficiency impairs the immune response to herpes simplex viral 1 infection. However, this study showed that high dose dietary supplementation, 10 times the adequate intake, did not further enhance the immune response. This finding suggested that avoiding vitamin E deficiency was important for an adequate immune response in the mouse model, but large supplemental vitamin E dose beyond the adequate intake does not confer further protection. Zinc plays a role in many aspects of the immune system and a deficiency has been associated with immune dysfunction and an increased risk for viral infections. Studies reveal that zinc levels tend to decrease with age, in parallel with declining immune function. Low serum concentrations of zinc have been linked to increased risk for post-herpatic neuralgia. Zinc has been implicated in the disruption of almost all aspects of the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex viral 2 replication in lab studies. Zinc sulfate caused up to a 99.8% inhibition of the herpes simplex virus 1 replication. In addition, zinc oxide was found to effectively prevent the entry of both the herpes simplex viral 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 into the cells. Animal models have also shown that zinc solutions protect against vaginal or rectal herpes simplex viral 2 infections and reduce the rate of viral shedding. Topical ointments containing zinc oxide have been used successfully to reduce the duration of outbreaks of genital and oral herpes in humans. Co-administration of zinc and a component of pomegranate rind has recently been proposed as a potential topical treatment for herpes infections, with promising early results in cell and animal models.
herpes simplex virus requires large amounts of arginine, an amino acid resembling the amino acid lysine, to replicate properly. Because of the structural similarities of the two amino acids, lysine can antagonize the effects of arginine, making it more difficult for the herpes simplex virus to replicate. Clinical trials explore the use of lysine in the prevention of herpes outbreaks are ongoing, but some results are conflicting. For example, one double-blind placebo control trial with 65 patients with oral herpes found no effect on the occurrence rate of herpes, while a similar study observed a significant reduction in the frequency, duration and severity of the herpes outbreak with the lysine treatment. To explain the differences observed in the results of these studies, a review of 12 studies exploring the use of lysine in the treatment of herpes viral infections was recently completed. Based on these studies, it appears lysine supplementation is most effective at doses over 3 grams per day, or approximately 1 gram per day, only when the patients are on low arginine diets. Diets rich in lysine and low in arginine consisting of foods such as yogurt, cheese, fruit, fish and poultry and avoiding nuts, grains, refined sugar and chocolate may help to reduce the severity of the herpes outbreak. The Mayo Clinic recommends individuals with history of oral or genital herpes to be careful about supplementing with arginine. Propolis is a resin-like substance and it's obtained from beehives and has a long history of medicinal use. It contains a mixture of several compounds, including flavonoids and polyphenols, many of which have anti-herpes simplex virus 1 activity. The variety of effects that it has on the immune system, together with its anti-inflammatory properties, may allow it to help the body to more effectively fight the infection. Propolis has been found to significantly inhibit the replication of herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 in cell culture. Additionally, ointments and lip balms containing propolis extracts have been tested in clinical trials and have been found to increase the rate of healing of both oral and genital herpes lesions, and they have even exhibited superiority over the standard Aclavar treatment. The effects observed may extend to other bee products, as a recent randomised placebo control trial found that children who received one milliliter of honey around four times per day in addition to Aclavir, had a significantly reduced duration of oral herpes symptoms compared with those who received the Aclavir alone. A systematic review of nine clinical trials involving bee products suggested that they might be a useful complement to the treatment of herpes. Lactoferrin is a protein and it's found in both cow and human milk and it has natural antimicrobial properties and it's able to help to protect the body from bacterial, fungal parasitic and viral infections. In particular, many preclinical studies have shown that lactoferrin is able to inhibit the replication of the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2, and also block the virus from entering the cells through interactions with heparin sulfate on the surface of the cells. Although clinical trials are needed to corroborate these findings in humans, lactoferrin appears to be a promising potential therapeutic agent against herpes infections. Curcumin, a compound found in the spiced turmeric, is thought to help the body to combat many infections, including those caused by viruses, due in part to its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Topical creams containing curcumin have been used in Indian traditional medicine for disease causing blisters such as shingles. Curcumin has also been shown to provide protection against the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 infection in cell culture. Curcumin's activity against herpes simplex virus 1 is associated with its ability to keep the virus from expressing genes that are necessary for infection and replication. Curcumin was also found to inhibit inflammatory processes that promote the herpes simplex viral replication in genital epithelial cells, resulting in decreased replication of the herpes simplex virus 2. While animals and human trials of curcumin use are still needed, these results highlight the potential of curcumin to be a useful anti-herpes agent. 
fucosidins are naturally occurring sugar polymers and are found in edible seaweeds and some other oceanic sources. They can stimulate the immune system. Many fucosidins have potent antiviral activity against several common viruses, including the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. Animal models have found that fucosidins protect against the herpes virus by a combination of direct inhibition of viral replication and by stimulating the body's immune response against the virus. Fusidin absorbs well into the skin, suggesting that a topical application may be a viable mode of application. A case report showed a 4% fusidin cream decreased the healing time associated with oral herpes outbreak. In this study case, a series of patients treated with the fusidin cream had symptom relief from the severely painful oral herpes within an average of five days. Lemon balm is a form of mint and it's been used traditionally to treat numerous ailments including herpes outbreaks. Several lab studies have shown that lemon balm extracts possess a variety of antiviral activities against both the herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. Clinical trials have evaluated the efficacy of topical lemon balm preparations and they've shown positive results. In one trial, a lemon balm ointment improved the symptoms of oral herpes compared with a placebo when applied four times per day for five days. The lemon balm treatment also prevented the spread of the outbreak and the authors suggested lemon balm may increase the time between the outbreaks. Two additional trials also found local therapy with lemon balm extract effectively eases the oral herpes symptoms. Licorice has demonstrated antiviral activity against several viruses including the herpes simplex virus 1. In an animal model of herpes simplex encephalitis, licorice root extract reduced the herpes viral replication in the brain by 45% and it significantly improved the survival rate of the treated animals. A recent study examining a herbal gel mixture containing licorice extract for the treatment of oral herpes indicated it may help to reduce inflammation and shorten the duration of the symptoms. The results of the study may serve to inform the development of future trials of licorice extract effect on the herpes in humans. Prophylactic and therapeutic probiotic use has gained traction in recent years as researchers have uncovered the various ways in which they can promote not only proper gut health but proper immune function and antiviral activity. Studies of probiotic strains of bacteria Lactobacillus raminus and Bifidobacterium adolescentus have found that the probiotic use can increase the activation and the viability of immune cells such as the macrophages and these inhibit the spread of the herpes virus in cell culture. In animal models, the probiotic yeast Saccharomyces boulardii improved gastrointestinal symptoms associated with herpes infection. A probiotic strain of L. plantarium delayed the development of the herpes virus associated skin lesions in mice and it decreased viral loads in the brain, which was likely related to increased activation of immune cell activity. In a randomized control trial of a multi strain, L. brevis probiotic in women with herpes genital infections. Probiotic use was similar to Aclover with regard to the improvement of their symptoms and the duration of the healing. The results of the preliminary studies support further investigation into the role of probiotic use in the treatment of herpes infections. For more on herbs, supplements and natural treatment plans, check out my website.